Hello and welcome to the countdown to Sapphire Now Vision. We've got an incredible lineup of speakers and presenters that we cannot wait to share with you. In just a few minutes, you'll hear from SAP Chief Executive Officer Christian Klein. And later, we'll have an exclusive musical performance from Sting. It's going to be an amazing day and we're delighted to have you join us. Since our founding 48 years ago, SAP's purpose has been to help the world run better and improve people's lives. And that's never been more needed than in today's turbulent times. We now find ourselves amongst a renewed civil rights movement being heard around the world. The SAP family is united to take action for justice, equality, and peace. SAP is committing to investing in organizations dedicated to social justice reform, education, and supporting Black-owned businesses impacted by current events. In addition, we are emphasizing our SAP.io fund and foundry efforts towards Black founders and entrepreneurs. And this is just the beginning. If we think back to when the global pandemic began, SAP moved quickly to open our platforms and services wherever possible to provide the most impact. For example, in my home state of New Jersey, Governor Murphy tweeted that they desperately needed supplies in their fight against COVID-19. So we offered our Qualtrics pre-screen and routing platform to help get people the necessary care across the state. And at a time when supply chains have been challenged, SAP has opened access to our Ariba network to connect buyers with the suppliers that have the goods and services they need. This has been key in getting items such as life-saving PPE into the hands of people who need it most, our frontline workers. For example, we are proud that we were able to support Ram Tool in sourcing 500 hospital beds in just 30 minutes. We've also sought out ways to make a direct impact on the lives of people who are suffering the most. Partnering with Gen Youth, the child health and wellness nonprofit, we created the SAP for Kids program, which helps families find food and other resources during the crisis. We also established a 3 million euro COVID-19 emergency fund to help support the needs of the World Health Organization, the CDC Foundation, and other enterprises serving communities in crisis. But we're looking to do even more. We want to help beat this. Shortly, we'll be launching a COVID-19 tracking app in Germany that will alert people who've come into contact with infected patients. This will allow public health workers to stop the virus's spread as quickly as possible. The fight against the invisible enemy isn't over, and we're not backing down. Together, we will overcome COVID-19. Together, we will adjust to new operating models. Together, we will come back stronger than before. Together, we got this. Like many of you, I really value and desperately miss the in-person interactions that are such a part of our daily lives and our events like Sapphire Now. Now, this clearly isn't how we imagine this year's event to be, but there are many positives. For example, our new digital experience is being shared in 14 languages around the world, allowing us to reach more people than ever. Today isn't the start of Sapphire Now Reimagined. We launched our experience in April with Sapphire Now Unplugged, which features conversations with many of the leaders, thinkers, influencers, and experts you'd expect to see at our in-person events. They shared their thoughts on a range of issues from the future of workplace collaboration to tips for doing our best during these challenging times. Sapphire Now Converge is a digital network with live streamed and on-demand content designed to deliver the insights you need to stay connected. Each day this week, you'll hear from a member of the SAP Executive Board as they set the vision and strategy ahead of the various Converge episodes. You will hear customer stories that cut across all business and industries. You will also hear about our latest innovations and be able to participate in live interactions and expert conversations. We will end this week with a very informative Q&A session 
with each member of our SAP Executive Board. You can submit questions anytime this week through our event platform. Also on our platform, you'll be able to access one of our new showcases. We have interactive experiences that take you on a journey through the intelligent enterprise to learn about customer experience, procurement, manufacturing, and delivery. We want you to maximize this experience. So please let us know what you think, because as always, it's our goal to help your world run at its best. If you are just joining us, welcome to the countdown to Sapphire Now Vision. We have an incredible lineup for you today. Soon, we'll hear from SAP Chief Executive Officer Christian Klein as he shares his vision for the intelligent enterprise and how that can enable you to become more resilient, more profitable, and more sustainable. Christian will also be joined by Lutz Mushka, Deputy Chairman and member of the Executive Board of Finance and IT at Porsche to discuss the challenges the automotive industry has been facing and how SAP has helped them excel. And finally, we'll be welcoming 17-time Grammy Award-winning artist and Rock and Roll Hall of Famer Sting, who will perform three songs he personally selected just for you. So stick around. One of the benefits of taking Sapphire Now online is that this is now a truly global event. To celebrate this, I am joined by three of our regional leaders, DJ Paoni, Steve Zakakis, and Scott Russell. Welcome to our countdown. Hey, Alicia. Hey, Alicia. Hi, everybody. Scott, let's get started. You run SAP across the Asia Pacific region. Talk with us about what some of the big challenges and priorities are for your customers right now in your region. Look, I think our customers are facing challenges all around the world, whether it be cash flow, how to serve their customers, look after their employees. The real focus is resilience, really driving resilience in the business. And the only way they can really do that is with digital technology, such as we're using today, to be able to drive their business forward which I think will sustain not just in the short term, but in the long term. So Steve, same question for you. What we see is very, very similar. And uh, to complement what um, Scott just said, I wanted to add that uh, here, we, we feel that customers are very focused on return on investment and return of experience. So trying to see what can we do for them quickly in short time that can have real impact to their customers and the customer of their customers. So B2B and B2B2C. So DJ, when you think across your customer portfolio in North America, is there anything unique that stood out for you, be it by industry or by location that you've recognized? Um, or are you seeing some pretty common needs across this COVID period? I think customers are looking for for us as SAP to provide them a little bit of stability um, and also business continuity in, in difficult times, but also in good times. And I think that starts with uh, people, right? They want the best and the brightest uh, and most talented people in the industry supporting them, uh, keeping their mission critical applications up and running. Uh, at the same time, you know, we're, we're a company born on innovation. So they want us to continue to innovate into the future, uh, think ahead, invest in their industry. Um, I'd say for now and in the future, they want a company like SAP to stand behind them, right? Show some compassion and help them deliver their products and services to people who need them and, and to help them do that digitally and in what the new norm will be virtually. So Scott, when you think about what your customers have been asking us for during COVID-19, talk with us a little bit about that. And, and do you think that that's going to change when we come out of this period? Or are you going to see some similarities in terms of what they're prioritizing now and in the future. If there's one thing that I keep on hearing from our customers, small, medium and large, whether you're in the manufacturing, which is really strong in this region or in other industries, that ability to be flexible, agility and speed. And that's the expectation of SAP. You need a digital platform that doesn't just give you the information, it gives you it at the real time so they can make better decisions, and adapting to a situation which for all of us is very unpredictable. In a short while, we're going to hear 
from Christian as he talks about the vision for our intelligent enterprise. And then that will be followed by several channels of content throughout the week that touches on all of our priority solution areas and how they work to enable an intelligent enterprise. So let's talk about what are you most looking forward to this week? Well, thank you, Alicia. For the first time, I have to say that I'm going to watch Sapphire without being jet lagged. So that's a, 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 probably one of the beauties of um, the digital experience. I, I think our customers and our partners want to see how SAP will, will make the structural changes needed in their offerings to ensure that the agility, the flexibility, the resilience, the, the empathy towards the needs of each business are met there. It has to be cloud, it has to be integration, it has to be industry solutions, and it has to be speed and time to the market. So DJ, how about for yourself? Yeah, Alicia, this is my uh, 24th Sapphire. So this is going to be a little bit different experience. I'm really excited about it. I just love the buzz that Sapphire creates. You know, the keynotes are, are always very inspiring. You know, where are we going? Where are we taking our customers? How are we going to get them there? Uh, I love to hear our customer success stories uh, at Sapphire. I mean, every industry, every size. I mean, our customers are, are the ultimate barometer of our success. So I'm looking forward to hearing from Adair Fox Martin later, who's going to be speaking with uh, Chobani. They're a US-based company. Uh, they've skyrocketed into a billion dollar business and it'll be great to hear from them on how they're investing in technology to differentiate you know themselves out in the marketplace and scott what about yourself any examples that that jump to mind for you of of customers or or things that we've been doing within sap that that come to mind for you there's probably a couple of examples alicia but the one that that i love is our partnership with the malaysian ministry of health together with ey and using our SAP and Qualtrics technology. You know, they were really focused on getting ventilator and, and health equipment and PPEs to the communities in the right places. And working with us, we built an app in less than a week um, that they were able to use to be able to navigate to get the right information, but also the right logistics, the right equipment in the right places to support the local communities. So, you know, no matter where you are in the world, the use of the digital technology to drive a course to help the community, uh, you know, that certainly made me very proud. So DJ, same for you. So any examples of, be it solutions that we've put out in the market that have helped our customers significantly or customers themselves that have been thriving during this period? What have you been seeing? One of my favorite stories is how SAP is helping feed children uh, across America. Right, there were 124,000 schools closed uh, due to the pandemic. There were more than 30 million children depend on school meals as a primary source of nutrition every single day. Uh, and in a matter of days, SAP developed an application called SAP for Kids to help families find feeding sites in their local communities, you know, given all the school closures. And you know, our employees just jumped right into action. They volunteered their time and you know, put our technology to work for those who need it. I think we can all agree that this has been a great period of inspiration and innovation during a time that has been challenging, but we've remained committed to helping all of our customers around the world maintain business as best as possible because that's always been our vision at SAP. I wanna thank all of you, DJ, Steve, Scott, for joining us today and sharing with us insights from across all of your markets. And thank you to everyone who tuned in to our countdown. I hope you enjoyed it. The Sapphire Now Vision keynote is about to begin, so I'll see you back here in just a moment. Hello to everyone around the world joining us for Sapphire Now Reimagined. I am delighted to welcome you and we look forward to providing you a best in class experience over the next few days. Of course, there's a reason we've called this year's event Sapphire Now Reimagined. We would have loved to be spending time with you in person, but we all know that's not possible at the moment. Instead, we're happy to share with you our new Sapphire Now Reimagined experience.
We've been working diligently over the past few weeks to transform our in-person event into a digital experience that is unique and relevant to you. Our presentations, which include SAP customers, experts, and guest speakers from around the world, have been translated into 14 different languages and tailored to your time zone for your convenience. And it doesn't end this week. Everything, even the live events, are available on demand. So you can watch when it's most convenient for you. It's always on. If you can't find anything left to binge watch, we've got you covered. Kicking off today's Sapphire Now vision is SAP Chief Executive Officer Christian Klein. Christian will share with you his vision to help all businesses become intelligent enterprises. He'll explain how we are leveraging our strategy, expertise, solutions, and partner ecosystem to help every business run at their best. Over the course of this week, SAP executive board members will welcome you each day as they discuss the building blocks of an intelligent enterprise. You can look forward to hearing from Adair Fox Martin, Jurgen Mueller, Luka Mucic, and Thomas Saresseg as they are joined by valued SAP customers. And make sure you tune in at the end of the week when we'll host a special Q&A session with all of our executive board members. Traditionally, Sapphire Now includes a fantastic concert. Just because we can't all be in the same room doesn't mean we can't celebrate together. And that is why during Sapphire Now Vision, we'll be joined by 17-time Grammy Award-winning artist and Rock and Roll Hall of Famer, Sting. He's personally selected a playlist to perform for us that you don't want to miss. As you settle into your home office, be it a desk, your kitchen countertop, or your sofa, we invite you to engage with us throughout the week by using hashtag SapphireNow on social media. Now, it's my immense honor to welcome the Chief Executive Officer of SAP, Christian Klein. Over the past few decades, Technology has helped businesses to thrive, new economies to emerge, and the lives of millions of people to improve all across the globe. Thanks to the proliferation of technology, the entire economy has been accelerated. Business has become digital. Processes have been automated and operations have been scaled. Agility has become the key determinant. Activities have been globalized. Things have been connected, enabling a multitude of innovations to emerge. And since 1972, we have partnered with you and led each and every evolutionary stage of your business. We helped you serve rising demands with technology. We helped you run your processes digitally end to end and allowed you to get transparent 360 views of your business. While doing so, we forged long lasting relationships built on trust. So today we stand strong together as we face some of the biggest challenges of our time. At this very moment, as we are all affected, it is clearer than ever how tremendous the impact can be when the processes we rely on come to a stop. Our world has suffered from the impact of the economic evolution of recent decades. Never have we used so many natural resources, emitted so much greenhouse gas, and produced so much waste. To brave the challenges of today and seize the opportunities of tomorrow, it is our collective responsibility to care about a sustainable world as much as we care about business success so that we can achieve prosperity and health for future generations. If we continue the way we're going, business success and quality of life will soon be restrained by diminishing environmental conditions. Now, imagine we could change this together. 
Imagine we can change our world for the better. Imagine that individually we become more resilient and successful, while collectively we become more sustainable and responsible. And now we tell you. We can. We can, and together we will. Becoming intelligent enterprises allows us to achieve incredible business outcomes across all dimensions. It allows us to try resiliency, to steer your companies through challenging times. It allows us to drive profitability, both top and bottom line, enabling growth and increased productivity. It allows us to drive sustainability by reducing carbon footprint waste and transitioning to the circular economy. As intelligent enterprises, we can achieve all of this at the same time. We can become more resilient and make sustainability profitable and profitability sustainable. Ladies and gentlemen, a warm welcome to this year's Sapphire Now. I don't know about you, but this short video gives me goosebumps. I'm asking you, asking all of us, to become resilient, sustainable and profitable growth companies. I believe Sapphire is the perfect place for this call to action. There's hardly any event that brings together so many decision makers of the world's most important companies. I'm convinced that together, as intelligent enterprises, we can turn the world's biggest challenges into our greatest opportunities. The recent pandemic showed us how helpless we can feel if something hits us unexpected. This crisis will drastically impact societies and businesses for months or probably even years. The digital transformation is no longer an option, but a must. When we can't interact in person, we are forced to find other ways of doing business. With the world in lockdown, business leaders across the world worry whether their companies have the resilience to survive. We have all realized companies which use innovative technologies were more competitive before the crisis and are more resilient in the crisis. Those that enabled new digital business models, drove automation and adapted their supply chains were better prepared for the unexpected. This crisis shows us, if your business is not resilient, you will be left with nothing. Once you have mastered resiliency, you can focus on profitability. No doubt, your priority probably was to first organize survival mode and take care of your employees. But let's face it, to emerge stronger out of this crisis, it is now more important than ever to set up your enterprise for growth. Today's technologies allow you to do just that. With new business possibilities, personalized customer offerings or new license models. These levers lead to a better customer experience and as a result to additional revenue streams for your enterprise. But new technologies also increase the scale of your operations. Infusing artificial intelligence drives process automation and productivity. All of this helps to secure the profitability of your business. No doubt, in the current crisis, health, safety and business continuity are top priorities. But let's not forget, our biggest challenge out there is the climate change. We are at the turning point. Just as we cannot ignore the pandemic and its impact, we cannot continue to ignore climate change and the contribution of our enterprises. If major industries such as utilities, agriculture and transport alone were to use digital technology to significantly reduce their carbon output, this could equal the positive impact of 500 billion trees. 
Just imagine the impact if all industries joined the effort. We can make this happen, as 85% of the largest carbon emission intensive companies want our software to manage their processes. The current situation has shown us we can quickly drive change if we want to. Let's seize this moment of change to build resilient, profitable, but also more sustainable enterprises. Do you feel this responsibility? I definitely feel it. We are all business women and men, and we care about our business success. But at the same time, we are members of our communities, and we are responsible for what kind of earth we will leave to our future generations. We have a unique opportunity. For seven weeks now, I have another great reason to care. Her name is Emma. I can tell you, I can hardly wait for another sleepless night. I want nothing more than to see her and my three-year-old son Max grow up in a healthy environment without limitations caused by us. The good thing is, we are in the driver's seat. And this is not only about the next generation. This is also about our customers and employees who choose companies which are real about sustainability. Today and in the future, companies are not only measured based on their financial performance, but on their contribution to society. Together we can lead this change and become intelligent enterprises to make sustainability profitable and profitability sustainable. The business values of becoming an intelligent enterprise are clear. Resiliency, profitability and sustainability. Our more than 400,000 customers don't question the business outcomes. But how to master the transformation is the key challenge for many other companies out there. We can help you achieve this. As Chief Operating Officer, I was responsible for SAP's own business transformation and supported many customers. I learned that a real business transformation will be only successful if an enterprise is willing to lead from the top. A true business transformation does not happen only with an intelligent workflow solution or by selecting many best of breed vendors leading to fragmented IT landscapes or by just moving your IT landscape on a public cloud infrastructure and creating data lakes. No other company is more experienced than SAP to transform your business because we have been doing this for almost 50 years. I would like to focus now on our product strategy and demonstrate why only SAP can deliver the business outcomes we just talked about. Our product strategy is tailored to one goal, being the innovative and trusted partner for your holistic business transformation. We have spent a lot of time with you to understand and address your requirements, challenges and chances. As a result, we have evolved our vision of the intelligent enterprise. I will briefly touch upon the components. Our intelligent suite supports end-to-end -end business processes and it is using new technologies to drive real business innovations. No other software has our ability to connect demand with supply, with C4HANA and digital supply chain and other important business processes like quote to cash to enable new license models. When we talk about lines of businesses, we will stay number one in finance, HR, spend management, digital supply chain. And we will enhance our efforts regarding solutions like C4HANA, commerce, and use our partnerships to further expand our capabilities in the front office. Our experience management solution offer insights into the emotions and feelings of customers, employees, and other critical stakeholders. They bring experience data into the intelligent enterprise. Wine Smith and the Qualtrics team will share more details during the experience day. Our business technology platform is the technical foundation of the intelligent enterprise. It allows our complete ecosystem to integrate SAP and non-SAP applications and data across hybrid landscapes, extend existing and create new innovative business applications. 
Besides its integration and extension capabilities, it enables cross-analytics, end-to-end reporting and planning, plus a 360 view of your business using real-time SAP and non-SAP data. With regards to the commodity infrastructure layer, we will continue to partner with Microsoft Azure, Google Cloud Platform, AWS or Alibaba. But we will own the business platform and we will own the application layer. SAP Industry Cloud offers cloud-native industry applications, delivering differentiating and innovative business capabilities for the fourth industrial revolution. We will partner with our ecosystem to gain broad coverage across all industries, building on our partners' expertise to expand the scope of our solutions and enhance the vertical capabilities of SAP. Thomas will give you an impressive example. And together with you, our more than 400,000 customers worldwide, we will further evolve this. Because you know best which industry best practices matter most to you and bring you a concrete business outcome. Today, most business processes have clear processes indicated diagrams. You order, you sell, you pay, you deliver. It's one step after the other. Between these processes and the process steps, there are many dependencies. Only SAP can bring together all this data from the many different stakeholders in one business network, allowing you to manage all these dependencies in real time. With our new Climate 21 program, we will support our customers to become sustainable companies by building analytical and transactional capabilities into our core business applications. This helps you to understand and minimize the carbon footprint of your products and operations, a huge step in taking climate action. Then again, all of this doesn't work without three key principles. One, integration. Two, innovation. Three, agility and speed. Let me tell you why these principles matter for all of us at SAP and which concrete benefits they bring to you. Regardless of the size or industry of an enterprise, it is fundamental in the digital age to run your enterprise seamlessly across the value chain. Without integrated business processes and a harmonized data model, you cannot make use of billions of data to offer personalized experience for your customers. You cannot manage real-time demand and supply seamlessly because at the end of the day, selling a broad application portfolio without integration is like selling a car without an engine. Now let's come to the second key principle, innovation. For us, this is all about how to increase the effectiveness of your enterprise. We are embedding artificial intelligence in our business applications to drive process automation and productivity. Every day, SAP HANA proves its role as strategic and innovative enabler at more than 32,000 customers. Why else should 92% of the Forbes Global 2000 companies use SAP technology? In addition to artificial intelligence and SAP HANA, together with our customers, we will develop game-changing business capabilities for your transformation on top of our business technology platform. The third principle, agility and speed. Today, an accelerated time to value for ERP is key. The times of three-year-long IT projects until they go live are over. You need to be able to quickly react to business needs in today's fast-changing environment. We have made excellent progress to deliver faster innovations to our customers. We modularized the stack. Now, the average SAP S4 HANA public cloud implementation takes less than four months. We increase the speed of our release cycles in the cloud, delivering innovations every four weeks. Now, let's see how all of this works together in reality with a real life customer example. Today and during the upcoming days, I want to bring the intelligent enterprise to life. Please join me on an end-to-end -end journey from buying to delivery and beyond. 
showing how you can achieve growth and sustainability with integrated, intelligent and highly resilient digital value chains. For this, I have chosen one of the most disruptive industries you can think of and which has a tremendous impact on all other industries. One that represents, unlike hardly any other, how business models are changing, how enterprises need to work differently and how much sustainability matters. The automotive industry. We know most people are not thinking about ordering a new car right now and certainly not a luxury sports car. Many are understandably worried about their economic future because of the corona crisis. As a result, the car industry is struggling with a sharp drop in sales. And it is technologically challenged like hardly any other by climate change. Which is exactly why we wanted to show you that few other industries are as innovative, as globally positioned and as economically significant. Mobility is and remains a prerequisite for growth and increasing prosperity in the world. Our partnership with Porsche began long before the crisis. The company is a real showcase for innovation, transformation and the will to reinvent itself in response to the challenges of our time. So let us gain first-hand insights into the fast-changing industry. Insights from one of the most innovative automotive manufacturers worldwide. Please welcome Lutz Meschke, CFO of Porsche. Thank you, Christian, for the kind introduction and for welcoming Porsche at this virtual sapphire. We are happy to be part of it. Ladies and gentlemen, mobility has always been one of the most exciting industries, at least from my point of view. But at the moment it is more exciting than ever before. We are right in the middle of a huge transformation. Mobility, like many other industries, is at the beginning of a new era. And this is currently putting us under particular pressure. We are experiencing the tension between innovation pressure, competitive pressure and cost pressure. What do I mean by that? Let's start with the pressure to innovate. Our customers have always been demanding, but some of them have different requests today than they did 10 years ago. In some cases, they also have additional wishes. They want digitized, connected and electrified cars. Sustainability has become a hard currency and yet the typical Porsche attributes must not be missing. But it's not just the customer's wishes that are tightening our conditions. We find ourselves in a political climate in which driving bans in inner cities or even total prohibitions on certain vehicle types are being discussed. And all this is happening under increasing competitive pressure. While many classic OEMs are slowly adapting to the new era, new players from the tech industry are entering the market with radical innovation and at an incredible speed. And while we invest in innovation and our competitors are anything but asleep, we still have to keep an eye on our returns. My third point is cost pressure. We at Porsche have grown very fast in the recent years. We have many clever minds in our company. Of course, our fixed costs have also risen as a result. In addition, we must continue to invest in new technologies. Until 2024, we have planned to invest 15 billion euros for electrification and digitalization. But there is even more to it than that. The corona pandemic just showed us insistently how important it is to act with a sustainably profitable setup. And secondly, it reminded us of how crucial it is to work with a resilient supply chain. In order to open up new business areas, we integrated digitalization as a central part of our Porsche strategy in 2015. Our goal? to transfer the Porsche brand experience into the digital future, thereby creating a benefit for the customer on the one hand and added value for the company on the other. 
Our efforts include topics such as connectivity, automated driving, new mobility services and digital sales channels, but also production 4.0. Porsche production 4.0 is smart, lean and green. Our first purely electric Porsche sports car has been launched last year, the Taycan. It is produced CO2 neutrally at our headquarter in Stuttgart-Zuffenhausen. And it will not be the only purely electric Porsche. In 2025, we expect to deliver more than 50% of our cars with an electric drive. We have great respect for the enormous challenges faced by the automotive industry in times of transformation. But we also see a unique opportunity. We are in the midst of driving our transformation towards a truly digital and data-driven company. As we know that in the digital area we don't have all the competencies that we need in-house, we truly believe in strong partnerships. Just like our strategic partnership with SAP. We have been collaborating for several decades already. But that was only in the beginning. Last year we have sealed a new strategic partnership to allow each partner tap into the expertise and experience of the other. We have together set ourselves the goal of driving forward co-innovations and jointly develop new solutions for the digital transformation. SAP benefits from Porsche's industry know-how and incorporates this knowledge in their standard solutions. We in turn are leveraging their standard capabilities and we aim at exploiting the full potential of our two key drivers. First, data-driven business models and second, a highly scalable and flexible end-to-end processes-driven architecture with embedded AI functionalities. Becoming a data-driven company means putting data at the heart of everything we do. And it means finally enabling new and more efficient ways of operating. One example of ramping up the way we operate is how we will approach decision-making in this new era. The goal is to embrace immediate fact-based decision-making on all organizational levels and have a 360-degree view on our company. To set the course, we are currently working on a central master data management solution with SAP and the Volkswagen Group. SAP master data governance allows us to harmonize and manage our master data across the company and increase the quality of our information. On top, we are already building our Porsche digital boardroom digitizing and integrating the entire reporting process across all functions. We are starting with finance, followed by procurement, production and all other business areas. This might replace our department-specific manually prepared PowerPoint decks and Excel sheets. In fact, with SAP Analytics Cloud, we will have one integrated and single reporting based on real-time information offering role-based insights and visualizations. We can already today see impressive outcomes. For instance, our management and sales reporting has decreased from 3 days to 20 seconds lead time. But we even think bigger. Let us have a look at the entire value chain and focus end-to-end -end processes. We are working on a highly standardized, seamlessly integrated and thus highly agile solution landscape. This provides us advantages in various business areas, such as customer service, manufacturing, logistics and after sales. We know that we are in the middle of our path in shaping the digital transformation and we are happy to have SAP as a strong partner at our side. There are already visions how an intelligent automotive enterprise could look like in the future. Let me be honest, I am personally already very much looking forward to turning these visions into reality. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mr. Meschke, for these impressive insights. It is an absolute honor to partner that closely with you and Porsche to make you ready for success now and in the future. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, 
let us now dive into such a vision of an intelligent automotive company. Our vision. Let us experience the intelligent enterprise potential by putting ourselves in the shoes of someone who wants to buy a new car. Something fancy, of course, but with a lightweight eco footprint. Here are the milestones of the journey we will go through. Configuration, planning, procurement, manufacturing, delivery, operation and second life. Everything starts with the configuration of a car, according to my likes and needs. I can do this directly on my mobile. I go with an electric model in black, with artificial ladder for my sport seats. Let's see what else I can choose. Many options are already pre-selected according to my liking. This preset configuration is based on multiple sources. The battery capacity, for instance, is based on my average driving distance and intensity. This and further information can be accessed in my customer profile. The intelligent driving assistance was selected in addition to cruise control. This combination was highlighted as it led to an increased customer satisfaction in previous orders. Other elements, such as the metrics lights, come from my peer group social trends, market trends, most popular combinations of options, and the number of service incidents and maintenance costs per option. What further simplifies my selection of options is that the system informs me about the environmental footprint and the sustainability impact of my choice. Finally, I can request a quote directly via the app and get a call back from my local dealer to finalize my order. Thereby, the request is routed to the dealer representative with the highest digital satisfaction scores, increasing the likelihood of a greater customer experience. After Christian has finalized his purchase, it is time for planning, where his order is coming in. What we can see here is the so-called digital twin, a key element and enabler of data-driven manufacturing. It is a virtual copy of Christian's car, which, which reflects the components he selected, such as the model, the battery capacity, and the artificial leather seats. Supported by technologies such as IoT, 3D simulation tools, and predictive analytics, the digital twin will represent Christian's car along its entire life cycle. Put simply, it brings together the physical and the digital world, and it reflects all data and information about the car. The digital twin is one of many elements available in the control tower, the one-stop shop for all information. It provides us with a transparent and true 360 view of the organization across all business metrics and the entire supply chain. We can see potential issues in real time, solve challenges before they even occur, manage exceptions and orchestrate responses. In the control tower, we can see the available plant and workforce capacity, as well as supply of required components to fulfill Christian's order. Thanks to intelligent alerts, we learn that we may run into fulfillment issues if we don't adapt our plan. But as the system also directly suggests solutions, we can easily do that. Thereby, we don't only look at our own company, but instead we are provided with an overview of the whole business network. This allows us to fill any potential gaps with the help of our ecosystem. So let's select a bigger manufacturing plant. By doing so, we see that we resolved our capacity shortage, but our carbon footprint increased significantly. As we also want to be sustainable, we choose another more eco-friendly alternative. With planning done, let's look at the next step. One integral part of any manufacturing business is strategic and operational procurement. Strategic supplier selection, for instance, is crucial to create a more sustainable, profitable and resilient business. Suppliers traditionally are scored based on a multitude of criteria that mainly drive profitability, such as timely deliveries, good quality and low cost scores. 
But as an intelligent enterprise, we also want to improve other dimensions, such as business resiliency and our environmental footprint. Therefore, we also include elements such as risk assessments or sustainability criteria like working conditions, geographic proximity and carbon output. And this is exactly what you can see here, allowing us to make strategically sound, responsible and future-proof decisions. Moving on to operational procurement. This involves all activities around the day-to-day -day business. And here, with the global economy more volatile than ever, especially exception handling is becoming increasingly important. Because if a supplier cannot deliver the requested components on time or in the right amount, it can jeopardize the entire production and the ability to fulfill our customers' orders. As an intelligent enterprise, however, you can benefit from transparent and actionable insights into your entire sourcing network. You can see that in case of critical situations, the system not only notifies you, it also suggests and takes counteractions to mitigate negative business impact. Having seen how intelligent planning and sourcing for Christian's electric car and its component take place, we now wonder how it gets assembled during manufacturing of the future. Here, we are inside an intelligent factory, where Industry 4.0 enables a highly digitalized and connected plant, with machines, robots and humans working side by side. All seemingly disparate parts of production are connected via IoT devices or advanced integrated circuits. We can measure, control everything that's happening throughout the process. Let's have a look at how this flexibility enhances the customer experience. I just learned that a new sustainably sourced fabric has been made available. I like this a lot and would like to go with that instead of the artificial black leather for my seats. And when I trigger this change, I'm immediately informed about the impact on the environmental footprint and I can see it going down, as well as the impact on the delivery date of my car. Back in the manufacturing plant, we not only see Christian's car come to life, moreover, we can observe the consequences of the change he made. We see the necessary actions triggered along the highly integrated value chain. And eventually, the seats with the new fabrics are received from the supplier and built into the new vehicle. Living up to such last-minute changes needs complete horizontal and vertical integration, two of the most important factors for production in an intelligent factory. Essentially, vertical integration ensures that machines, devices, workers and processes work together seamlessly. Horizontal integration, on the other hand, allows production data to be used for making business decisions. It allows communication between the shop floor network and other systems, such as ERP or manufacturing execution system. This increases visibility and collaboration throughout the value chain. Once Christian's car and the newly chosen seats are assembled, it's ready for delivery. I have to admit, I'm really excited. Thanks to blockchain, I can track and trace my order and see that it will arrive momentarily at my house. After delivery comes the fun part, driving the new car. My wife and I decide to spontaneously take a ride into town, spending a nice evening in the city with a great dinner in a western mall, followed by a movie. Thanks to the built-in digital assistant, we can see where a parking slot is available, we can reserve a table in our favorite restaurant and we can book our tickets for the cinema. And when we drive home later, we get one invoice thanks to integrated finance processes. Also, just imagine you drive to Italy on vacation. Thanks to SAP, you can book an insurance on top on the fly. During every step of the product lifecycle, Christian's car is generating data. Vehicle data can be used for many different purposes. One is to improve the driving experience, as we've just heard from Christian. For the intelligent automotive company, this means staying in constant contact with Christian, for instance, by collecting both 
direct and unsolicited feedback. It is coming in through over 40 different channels like voice, text and social media. Now we can easily find out what we can do to increase customer satisfaction. But vehicle data can also be used for other purposes, to improve road safety, to reduce energy consumption or to optimize products and services. As this vehicle data includes information about the condition of the separate parts, it can also play a crucial role in future design and engineering. For example, potential weaknesses in a built-in part can be detected and swapped out in future productions. Further insights on usage and condition of components help, de help determine second life options. Aftermarket volume is growing rapidly and becoming increasingly important to all industries. So, when the car has served its purpose and it is time for its disposal, it has provided us not only with a continuous learning cycle. It further allows us to turn the end of the car's life into a new beginning. We create a true life cycle in which parts of Christian's electric car add value even after its disposal. And this, ladies and gentlemen, is how we can transition to the circular economy. In closing, let me sum it up. To transform into resilient, profitable and sustainable intelligent enterprises, three principles are key. Integration. We will deliver a strong business process integration across the entire value chain. Innovation. We will infuse intelligence across our whole portfolio and deliver new, differentiating business innovations. Agility and speed. We will further accelerate both time to value and innovation cycles. All with one focus, our customer success. SAP was always best when we listened to you. We want to serve you with the best possible business outcome, help you to quickly adopt and get the value out of our solutions to ensure your long-term success. This doesn't stop at the point of sale. It is all about ensuring adoption and generating value across the whole life cycle. True business transformation is about holistic solutions. It is about identifying the right set of products and functionalities to address your needs. It is about their appropriate implementation and seamless adoption. My colleague at Dare Fox Martin will show how we turn the intelligent enterprise a reality for our customers. And it is not only at Dare who will share her vision with you over the upcoming days. Thomas Saueressig and Jürgen Miller will add further detail to our evolved vision of the intelligent enterprise. Luka Mucic will talk all things business transformation. Please make sure you join my colleagues and their guests during the many sessions that this year's Sapphire holds. And I'm already looking forward to our interactive Q&A. Please bring all your questions and feedback. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm convinced my daughter Emma, my son Max and their entire generation will one day hold me, will hold all of us responsible for our performance in achieving these goals. And I feel pretty confident, because together we embarked on the journey to becoming intelligent enterprises. We have come a long way already, and you can be sure that you have our full commitment all the way. Together, we develop, optimize, and deploy solutions that help us master the ultimate challenge, making a significant contribution to growth and social well-being while acting sustainably. Together, we will make decisive progress, making sustainability profitable and profitability sustainable. And that is how the best will be measured. Never has the purpose of our efforts been better. Never has our contribution been more important for Emma, for Max, for all your children and grandchildren, for your whole families and loved ones, and for all of us. Let's show the world that when people and technology meet, amazing things can happen. Thank you all for joining.